introduce you to Olga, who will now recite from my brother's book, Veritas. Hello, everyone. Um, hello. Hello. This is uh, a piece from Pete's book. It's March 1960. The Peter Quaife character in the book is called Marcus. And he has a friend called Nobby, and they get up to all sorts of pranks. <laughs> Nobby was leaning out of the bedroom window, waving. No, what you doing? called Marcus across the two gardens that separated them. Listen to this. Give me a second, all right? Nobby's head disappeared. For a minute, there was silence. Then the sound of a guitar being plugged in bounced out from the window. The volume went up and down as the amplifier was adjusted, settling on extra loud. The speakers protested at the power they were being asked to handle, and the guitar distorted badly. There were a few electronic clinks and boinks, and then suddenly, Marcus stood rooted to the spot as the sound of a slide guitar came pouring through the window at full volume. The powerful sound crashed across the back gardens of Steeds Road. Marcus shook his head in disbelief as a sound, very much like the guitar of Elmore James, resounded in his ears. He stood transfixed. A huge smile across his face as Nobby smacked the music out of his guitar in a fury of rough blues licks. It ended as suddenly as it had begun, leaving behind a deafening silence. Nobby appeared at the window once more, a smug smile of self-satisfaction on his face. So, what do you think? I told you I'd bleed in surprise you, didn't I? screamed Marcus. That was great, Nob. I'll do it again. No, no, wait. Let me come up there instead. Oh, wow, Nob, that was fantastic. Mar Marcus hurtled down the garden and into the alleyway and then ran up Nobby's back garden. He had almost made it to the back door when abruptly the world around him came back to life. Doors were flung open. Windows cracked back and the sound of complaining and angry voices filled the air as the neighbours began to protest at the invasion of their acoustic privacy. Up and down the street, people gathered to march on Nobby's house, demanding either an explanation or a lynching. Marcus went gingerly into the house, where he found Mrs Gardner lying on the sofa, a cardigan over her head having an attack of the vapours in advance of the explosion of neighbourly wrath. Marcus carefully and silently ran up the stairs. He burst into Nobby's bedroom to find Nobby sitting on the bed, guitar in lap, holding up the hand that wore the broken bottleneck. Ah, oh, fat Nobby, that was the greatest thing I ever heard, gasped Marcus. But you're an awful lot of trouble now. I think it would be best if you disappeared for a while. Nobby looked up at Marcus and said smugly, Did I or did I not tell you to trust me? Did I or did I not promise to play an Elmore James solo? Oh, Nob, I tell you it was great, but I think there's a mob that would like to see some of your blood on the ground. I really think you ought to disappear. Ah, oh, they're angry because they don't understand good music when they hear it, said Nobby with a smirk. Don't worry, Mark, they'll come around eventually, you'll see. No, I think they already have come round. Go and look outside your mum's bedroom window. Nobby walked through to his mother's bedroom, peered carefully out of the window at a crowd of very irate neighbours who saw the curtains move as soon as Nobby inched them aside. There was a crash and a tinkle of broken glass as a stone came flying through the window. Nobby ducked back. Um, I think they're a bit pissed off. Oh, don't worry, though. They'll get over it. They usually do. Marcus said, I think it might be a good idea to hide your guitar and amplifier over at my house, just to be on the safe side. Downstairs, the sound of banging suddenly ceased as Mrs Gardner finally opened the front door. 
the sound of a dozen angry neighbours shouting and protesting reached their ears. I think you'd better scarp a knob, I really do, warned Marcus. Sounds like you're not going to get away with this one in a hurry. But what about my guitar, said Nobby. If she's in a really bad mood, you'll know she'll smash it. You know what she's like. Look, drop it out the window, suggested Marcus. I'll climb down and catch it and whip it over to my place. Well, what about the amp? Oh, can you catch that as well? Nobby, that bleeding amp weighs a ton. It will crush me. I'll drop it gently. Nobby! All right, just the guitar then. Marcus climbed out of the window, swung over onto the drain pipe and clambered down to the ground. OK, Nobby, I'm down, Marcus called. Nobby appeared with the guitar, holding it with both hands, dangling it over the windowsill. Nobby, is it unplugged? Oh, I'll go, hang on a minute. Nobby disappeared back into the bedroom. Marcus waited beneath the bedroom window, glancing over at the open kitchen door and listening to the argument coming faintly through from the front door on the other side of the house. Mark, are you ready? Yeah, hurry up before someone sees us. Nobby gently let the guitar down, hand by hand, finger by finger, until he was holding it just by the tip of the neck. It was still a few feet above Marcus's head. All right, said Nobby nervously. I'm going to drop it now. Ready? Ready, said Marcus, his arms outstretched. Nobby let go of the guitar. It fell smoothly into the waiting arms of Marcus. Got it, Nob! Nobby leant out the window. Is it all right? You didn't drop it, did you? Oh, the guitar's fine. I'll take it over to my house. Come over when you can, OK? Marcus began to run down the garden's back garden, holding Nobby's precious guitar. He'd almost made it to the kitchen when he clearly heard Mrs Gardner enter Nobby's bedroom. Even though Marcus was three houses up from the gardeners, it was quite obvious from the screaming and yelling that she was now confronting Nobby. Marcus couldn't make out all the words that were being held at the top of Mrs Gardner's voice, but the thumps and whacks, followed by shouts and yelps of pain, paused long enough for him to hear Mrs Gardner's voice screaming, I'll bloody kill you! I'll swing for you, I swear I bloody will! Suddenly, a crash sounded from the window, followed by quickly by Nobby's agitated voice screaming, No, Mum, no, not the amplifier! Mum, Mum, no! Everything seemed to happen in slow motion. Horrified, Marcus saw the black and grey amplifier exit the bedroom window, taking with it several panes of broken glass. Almost immediately, the amplifier was followed by Nobby, who, with outstretched and flailing arms, leapt from the window in an attempt to save his precious amplifier. Slowly, the two twisted through the air as they fell to the ground, 12 feet below, with Nobby still trying to grasp the amplifier, his skinny legs galloping away in a futile attempt to catch up. A terrible scream came from the bedroom window just as Nobby and the amplifier hit the ground below with an awful and sickening crunch. There was total silence. Then clearly Nobby's pained voice said, Ow! Bugger that really bleeding hurt! Mrs Gardner appeared at the window, her face ashen and drawn, as she looked down to where her son lay below, his precious amplifier on top of him. Oh, Nobby, my Nobby, are you hurt? She cried in horror. Then Nobby's voice, weak and full of sarcasm, said, No, I always jump out of bleeding windows with me amplifier, the daft bint. Of course I'm hurt. Get this bleeding amp off me. <laughs> Mrs Gardner flew down the stairs, running outside into the garden in a flurry of skirts. Some of the neighbours were now jumping frantically over the fences and running up the garden in their bid to help the, new, the hapless lad. Marcus came running up the garden, just as two of the neighbours were removing the amplifier from Nobby's skinny body. Nobby lay alternately groaning and yelping, 
and the six inches of soft dirt that he had luckily only just raked in preparation for a small lawn. No, are you all right? asked Marcus, kneeling down by the badly bruised body. Yeah, I think so, groaned Nobby. With a trace of panic in his voice, he whispered in Marcus's ear. Mark, ask my mum to have a look at me private. The corner of the ad hit me real hard there, and I can't feel anything. What? said Marcus, his eyes full of horror. Me private, repeated Nobby frantically. Get me mum to have a look at me private. Marcus turned and began to whisper to Mrs Gardner, who was leaning, kneeling in the dirt, crying and wailing. She jumped up, shock and fear on her face. What? My Nobby's private? His last is private? My Nobby's private has been cut off, severed from his body? Oh, Mum, do you have to tell everybody? Oh, my God, my young Nobby's made for life. you never... She stopped as the awful realisation hit her. Oh, my God, you'll never be able to father children. I think peeing is more important to me in the long run, Mum came Nobby's faint reply. Marcus made a decision. He took hold of Nod Nobby's muddy trousers and unbuttoned them. With one pull, Nobby's skinny shanks were exposed to the neighbour's curious gaze. There was no blood, but just to be sure, Marcus took a quick look inside Nobby's urine-stained pants. Oh, it's all there, it's intact, reported Marcus. But it looks like he's going to have a bruised private for a while. It's going to be interesting to see him walk. Thank you.